we always aspire to give our investors access to opportunities, investments, assets that they would otherwise not be able to access on their own. And uh, when we were beginning a, a fund, a very specialized fund that we were calling Quoted Private Equity, we sat back as a team and we made an observation that if you take, if you look at all the African stock markets and excluding South Africa, and you remove the five most liquid counters, you are left with a very liquid asset class. And some of these companies are, are le leaders in their own sectors or in their own industries. Some of them are number twos, and they have great uh, significant growth potential. And uh, these companies, what, was, what is really shocking is because they are illiquid, then they tend to be below the radar of investors. Uh, they tend to be under-researched. Uh, they just, they just, um, you know, they just unknowns. They just unknowns to many uh, investors who fly in and fly out of the continent, and that really caught our attention. And given that we were coming from a private equity background, that 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 really is the DNA of our investment process. We thought this is quite interesting. Even though we would still invest, we come across a very good attractive opportunities in the liquid space. Uh, we consider this to be really the secret sauce. Um, how do you find these opportunities that, you know, investors who are flying in and flying out, they don't have the time to find them. That uh, became our, our key focus. And uh, we went for, for our first opportunity was actually in Kenya, where we bought a company called uh, Kabasi, 22% stake listed company. It was um, in the process of being acquired by another, then that process uh, uh, fell through the cracks and, and the company remained unlisted. And anyway, to cut the long story short, it took us two weeks to negotiate an off the market price, um, another three months to go through the legal hurdles for us to be able to, to execute um, uh, an, um, in the market uh, what was agreed off market. Uh, very typical of, you know, uh, practicing private equity in the in the in the listed space, uh, we we put in about 4.2 million dollars, and 24 months later we exited at about uh, 12 million dollars. So that really gave us um, um, it it gave us more energy to go out there, look for similar opportunities. We went to Ghana. We found another company there, a bank, a mid-sized bank called Cal Bank. We, it took us two years observing that particular company. We liked some of the things we saw. I won't bore you with that. We invested about $3 million. Six months later, the thing went up uh, uh, three times and uh, to $9 million. Um, and we ex exited half of our stock and brought, repatriated some of the funds, uh, most of those funds back in, and we were left with some of the profits there looking for more opportunities in that market. So that gave us even more, more oomph to look for those kind of opportunities. We went to, 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 to Rwanda uh, when they were just beginning their stock market. It was so difficult even to find a, stock, um, a custodian, simple things like those ones. We found ways of going around that. Um, and we put in a uh, million dollars because it wasn't a big opportunity. We got allocated less than half of that we exited at about $2.5 million uh, about 28 months later. So the story was just continuing. We went to Tanzania. Let me not bore you too many stories. I went to went Tanzania. We bought another brewing business there where the share price of about 10 years was like a staircase, you know. Um, the operating profit was rising every year, but the share price was not changing uh, for a long period of time. It was not responding to to new information and we we discovered this because Tanzania had locked out foreign investors into that market because they had put a cap of 75% and we got a window of investing in that particular market because they allowed East Africans to invest in that market if they did not have any local investor to take up uh, uh, such a big opportunity. So we for some time we were, you know, uh, like the only ones investing in that particular market. And that's something that we really like. We don't mind being the first. We don't mind to take the, 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 the first movers risk. 
And uh, we are very fortunate that the investors who have been investing with us, they give us that, 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 that trust and confidence uh, um, to do that for them. So we bought, we bought that stock over a period of time. We had given ourselves seven years to recoup our initial capital just through the dividends because it didn't seem feasible to sell a big stake in that market. But two years in, into buying that particular stock, it was discovered by other you know, investors, majority of them uh, foreigners. Uh, now they had opened up the caps and, uh, and um, people were fighting for our stock. And we, we, I remember we put in about $8 million and we came out about $33 million 28 months later. So this, this strategy of finding unique opportunities that, that and be, trying to always be among the first investors into those, you know, what would be considered illiquid opportunities, but really very attractive uh, opportunities, uh, has really bore fruit uh, for us. And if it was not for that, I don't think there would be Nabo Capital. Uh, Nabo Capital today. So that's that's really uh, what we aspire um, uh, to 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 make your one dollar to be one dollar and twenty cents, and continuously increase wealth for our clients. Mm -hmm.